The legend of Robert the Fox, famed for his antics and actions in the region of Sicily, starts on a western part of Normandy. Here in the village of Hotville, his father, Tancred, was the lord of this small community, and historically little is known about him. The one thing most agree on is that Tancred had lots of kids. Fifteen children between two wives, and smack in the middle of them, firstborn of his second wife, was Robert. As Robert grew older, and the reality of being so far down the chain of succession became clearer, he decided to make a move. Like many Normans of the day, he moved to Apulia. He brought with him little, except for his blade, ambition, and his cunning. He was not, however, the first of his kin to take such action. Prior to his arrival, his eldest brothers, William and Groko, had been serving as mercenaries. By the time their younger brother Robert had arrived, William had already passed away. This left Drogo as the leader of the Apulian Normans. Drogo was not exactly pleased at the arrival of his half-brother. Robert's driven ambition was the thing of legends, even early on. While no one will ever know for sure why, that ambition likely paid a part on why Drogo refused Robert's request for land. Turned away by his own blood, Robert set his gaze on finding his own way in the world without begging for scraps from the table of his family. He woke up and simply chose violence. Conquest was a bit of a distant dream at that time, so Robert found a content rhythm in banditry. He stole food from locals, kidnapped wealthy merchants and nobles alike, and of course there was always lots of plunder around. As his power and numbers grew, so did his influence. Eventually, Robert was able to come to towns and just collect tribute. These tributes were what pushed Robert from local pest to dangerous player in a deadly and unstable game. After establishing himself a much more protected base of operations, Robert began to expand on his methods. The few Normans that remained alive at his side were good and loyal enough, but he needed more. A fearsome leader, he was able to attract the loyalty of a group of Slav settlers. These settlers, not necessarily the best trained of his troops, acted as light infantry, forward scouts, and of course, wanderers. Life was not easy for the bandit prince. Robert lived in a bit of destitution, little funds to pay his troops, and even basic necessities to maintain appearances. More than once, he returned to Apulia in order to find opportunities for easy coin, reinforcements, or a weakness in his brother Drogo. Drogo did not, however, fall to weakness. On his way back from a meeting with the Pope, Drogo was assassinated. With Drogo's death, his brother, Humphrey, took control of the now coveted title. Our cunning Robert would need to wait and muster more troops to his cause, or simply outweigh his new political rival. On one of his trips back to Apulia, Robert met Gerard. Gerard offered Robert many things, a wife, soldiers, and most famously, the nickname Biscard. With this newfound power base, Robert was able to paint the region red with the blood of those who would oppose him. But a sudden twist of fate caused a disruption for his current motions. Humphrey passed away in the year 1057, and it was Robert Stern to take the family lands under the direct control. Now the Guiscard was the recognized leader of the Apulian Normans, and this bolstered his already growing military power. Robert commanded authority and inspired those of Norman descent. With these qualities, he was able to bring other Normans. The promise of land, wealth, and power emitted a powerful siren song that not even members of his family could resist. And so it was his younger brother Roger showed deference to Robert. And for a while, things were good. While the brothers did have their tensions, this was not the primary source of conflict for Robert. In 1074, as territorial tensions rose, Pope Gregory VII excommunicated Robert. For six years, he was excommunicated and it was an unusual situation. The excommunication was more of a political leverage. The Pope was lacking military resources and was in the middle of a relations breakdown with the King of Germany. So it was in 1080 that a guest arrived in the Norman court. This deposed Emperor Michael VII allowed Robert his desires of conquering Byzantine land. The excommunication lifted, the Pope gave his approval, and decreed it a restoration mission. Eventually, Emperor Henry turned his swords toward Rome, and the Pope reached out to the valiant Norman warrior king, Robert. But when the Norman soldiers arrived at Rome, they discovered that the people had already surrendered. With little else to do, and maybe a tad bit of frustration, the Norman troops sacked Rome. It was a sacking to end to all sackings. Neither Goths nor Vandals could hold a candle to the hunger of the Norman forces. Gregory shouldered the blame for the terrible loss and was reviled by the Roman country folk and lived out the remainder of his life in exile. By the end of his life, in July of 1085, Robert had become one of the greatest warlords of the realm of Latin Christians. 
He was called on by popes and emperors. His armies were great enough to rival the legends themselves. An intense fever, however, that lasted six days, caused Robert to pass away. Buried in Venosa, the Apollonian Abbey founded by Drogo. Paul in his tomb, a small epitaph, the first lime, an adequate tribute to a dangerous and cunning man. Here lies the Guscard, the terror of the world. Tune into this channel for more Legends of Crusader Kings 3.